Hey Glam, what are you doing? Oh, hey Michael! Oh, nothing much. I'm just configuring the CEO's new phone with his email account. Easy. I'm guessing you're using the Outlook application because that makes most sense, right? Outlook? No, 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 no. The CEO wanted some third-party application which he knows the best but can't configure himself for some reason. Hey, Michael, quick question. Which protocol do you prefer? Do I use POP3 or IMAP to configure his email account? Wait, what? You're going to configure the boss his mailing application with a legacy protocol? <laughs> yeah, man. The app doesn't support modern authentication. Besides, we use legacy authentication still everywhere in the company. No worries. Okay, okay. You know, Microsoft is going to postpone legacy authentication or actually completely block it in October 2022. Do not use it. Dude, Microsoft will postpone again, October 2022. Pff, the pandemic will be still at full force. I'm sure they'll postpone it. Besides, all the automation scripts and the complete service desk is running on a legacy uh, protocol. <laughs> Imagine changing that. Aren't you worried about security risks? All of those unfamiliar signs and possible travels? Doesn't that explain much right now? Don't we have this covered? Nah, man. We got MFA. We got it covered. <sighs> okay, I think we're missing the point right here. I need to go talk to Sven. We got big issues. Hi, all. So in case the intro wasn't clear, I'm going to be talking about legacy authentication. So um, Microsoft, or rather the Exchange team, announced that um, on October 1st, 2022, they will be permanently disabling basic authentication in all tenants, regardless of the usage, um, with the exception of SMTP Authenticated or SMTP Auth. Um, so that will be the new hard deadline, why do I say new hard deadline? Well, because in the past, Microsoft has stated a couple of times that it will be blocking um, basic auth, but they kept postponing the deadline because of COVID and companies not being ready due to COVID. Um, well, besides the fact that Microsoft will be blocking those protocols, there is actually a bigger reason, a security reason, on why you want to switch to a modern authentication and drop legacy protocols or legacy authentication as soon as possible. Let me show you why. So let's start with identifying what the legacy authentication protocols are. Lucky enough, Microsoft created docs listing all of those protocols for us. And if we go through them, we can see some interesting ones. Uh, we can see authenticated SMTP, but I think this is one that they will make an exception for. Um, we also have auto discover, I'll go on, but for example, also exchange online PowerShell. So even in scripts, if you're using the old PowerShell commandlets, you will be blocked to your exchange online. So just for reference, all of these protocols can be used in order to communicate with your exchange online server um, for management, for sending emails, for linking address books, all of them. But what is the big issue besides the fact that they're going to be blocked is a security reason and a big security reason the fact that they do not support multi-factor authentication and that a single factor authentication is enough to verify if a user's password is correct or not and i can hear you guys thinking out loud okay easy i just implement a conditional access policy where i block legacy authentication they can't get in mm. From a security point of view, I cannot agree, and I'll zoom in on why. So, in order to understand the security risk, let's go through an authentication flow with Exchange Online. So, we got Jon Snow, he uses protocol IMAP uh, with his password and authenticates to Exchange Online. In the background, Exchange Online will verify with Azure AD and say, hey, is this password correct? 
Azure AD will say, yeah, yeah, it's correct, you may allow it. Note that even though if you have MFA enabled for this user, he will not be prompted with a request as the protocol just doesn't support it and simply will not request an MFA prompt. So if we move on and we say, OK, I'm not going to allow legacy authentication. I'm going to blo be blocking it with a conditional access policy. The first three steps are the same. Actually, the four steps. And the primary password verification Azure AD has been done. And right now, the conditions are evaluated. Does he use the correct protocol? And the condition access policy will be saying, no, he's not using the correct protocol. He's using IMAP, so we're going to need to be blocking this sign-in. And the response on this sign-in is quite interesting, as it will say, sorry, no access as you do not meet the requirements. And this is where it gets very interesting, especially for attackers. Because due to this response, they know that the primary password verification was correct, because as they know, hmm, we just did not meet the requirements. We went through the, password, the first primary password verification and bounced on something that was configured within conditional access. And it just takes a little bit of guesswork that it might be the fact that they were using an old protocol. Now, this is one security risk. But another thing is that you will be invoking a lot of alerts with this setup. Impossible travels, a typical travels, unfamiliar sign-ins, um, your identity protection or Defender for Cloud apps will be showing you a lot of alerts with a lot of failures that will be showing you people are trying to abuse legacy auth protocols to get in. But let me show you a way on how you can get rid of all of this hassle and do it securely. This will be done by combining both. You will be combining conditional access policy to ensure that every protocol that is being used is a modern auth protocol, but you will be also implementing an exchange online authentication policy, which gets rid of a lot of issues. So the first step is the same. John authenticates to Exchange Online, but we have a policy within Exchange Online that says any legacy auth, so even IMAP, just drop the request. Don't look at it, just let it go it will not accept it and the authentication flow will not be continuing. Just deny the user access with those protocols. Meaning that there will be no verification to Azure AD, no single steps, no any intel gathering from attackers as it will just be having a block on their sign-in. Great. So how do I know how many, rec how many legacy protocols are still being used with that within my environment? Easy, let me show you. So you start with going to your Azure portal and you go to Azure Active Directory and we scroll down to Workbooks. In the Workbooks tab, you're going to click on Sign in, Sign Ins Using Legacy Authentication. Um, as this is a, a test environment and we do not have any legacy authentication protocols enabled, I do not have a lot of data. But if I show you the following as an example, which I anonymized uh, for good reasons, is you would, could be seeing stuff like this. You will be listed with all the protocols um, that have been encountered in Azure AD. If you would click on a certain protocol, you will be giving a list of all users with successful sign-ins and the amount of sign-ins. With this workbook, you could identify what the possible impact is and which applications, as also service accounts, will be showing up in this list. You will be need to migrate to a modern authentication. And with this workbook, you can get started with identifying the apps, migrate them, double check, and clean up all of those dirty legacy protocols and switch over to the safe, and sound modern authentication. That's it, nothing more to say. Good luck and do not wait for the 1st of October in 2022. Just start with removing those dirty 
basic art protocols.